suffered with. And so um, now after, you know, and that was really the impetus for doing the book because, you know, after I'd returned the guitar to him and I'd read all the books about BB and I'd read all the articles. And I mean, I've got like, you know, a whole tub of books and reference stuff that I've done just on Mr. King and his guitars was that even though everybody had covered his life and everything on and how he come, came to be the king of the blues, nobody had covered his instruments. And at that time, uh, back in 2009, those kind of books didn't come out which now they have. Now you've got one on Rolling Stones, you've got one on the Beatles, you've got all these books coming out on their gear. But at that time, nobody covered them. And I found out from my research, there was a lot of misinformation about Lucille guitars and about all the guitars that Mr. King played. Also, he still plays Lab Series amplifiers, which have not been made since the, uh, like, 82. So I actually got to interview his guitar tech, who was also his amplifier tech. I got to interview his rhythm guitarist. I got to interview uh, Bruce Kunkel from the Gibson Custom Shop that made a single, uh, actually two different ones, but a Lucille art guitar for his 70th birthday. And so it's really interesting to find these people behind the man that is the king of the blues that, you know, with these guitars and the stories and the neat antidotes, you know, that you got to hear from all these people. And so I, I thought... Maybe I should write a book on it. I think that's a that's an amazing book because I think every guitar tells a story. It's like it's been in a pawn shop, it's been on the street, it's written hit songs. If, if guitars could talk, they could write their own books, but they can't. So, so here you are, and obviously it's a, it's a great story, and you've got a connection to BB King because he did the intro for it. Right, right. He was uh, he was kind enough. You know, I asked his uh, his office, Laverne, there in Las Vegas. I'm like, you know, I'd approach Carlos Santana and I'd approach like Willie Nelson, other people that I knew were Mr. King's friends. And finally, you know, I, I'm here after I, would you know, basically completed the manuscript. And I'm like, why don't I just ask BB? And, uh, you know, sometimes the simplest answer is the best. And so when I did, they're like, yeah, he'd be happy to. So that is the intro for the book. And uh, also, I'm actually dedicating the book to my late father, also Jerry Dahl, who, uh, you know, got me into playing music, who played bass and everything. The funny thing was, I actually had Mr. King sign a couple of dad's albums. And they're like the early B.B. King ones from like, you know, the 60s and everything. So it's got my dad's signature on the back. So when he went to a house party, no one would steal it. And then B.B. <laughs> King's signature on the front. So it's sort of like the circle is completed. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's sort of taking on a life of its own. I mean, you know, the story about me returning it was actually put into an English magazine just recently. I mean, so, it's such a great story. I think, I think it, it connects with guitar players. I think it connects with us just as humans because we've all had something that we've lost and then to have it come back. It doesn't always happen, but an incredible story. And I think that what's happened to you since then shows what can happen when you do the right thing. Right. And, and that's the funny thing, you know, uh, talking with people is, uh, you know, I was talking with one of the guys over at Guitar Center. He's like, you know, 85 percent of the people wouldn't do what you did. And I'm like, I don't I don't agree with that. I, you know, I, I want to believe that more people would do the right thing and not do it for money and not do it for anything else. But just do it for for the right. You know, I, I told my wife the night before I went to meet Mr. King at his office, I said, whether I end up with a Lucille or not, I'm giving him back his birthday present. I said, it's just, I said, I may not see anything. I'm okay with that because my conscience won't let me do anything else. Well, and only a guitarist can understand how important a guitar is. Yeah. Like I said, it's an, ex it's an extension of you. And that kind of leads me to the next question. I want to talk about how I discovered you. Flipped on the television <laughs> station. And there you are on the local Fox affiliate. Right reviewing gear. I was like, right. man, this, this is a guy that we, we don't really do that kind of stuff on music business, right? It's music business, but at the same time, as I mentioned about guitars, I mean, this equipment is what allows you to have your business. It it's, really it, does. It, it amplifies you. It makes you sound better. It adds more tone. And we're going to start a se separate section of music business radio with you right. where we kind of do what you do on television. Right. And, and thanks, to, thanks to Gary. I mean, uh, you know, being approached on this and from you guys seeing the segments, you know, that I've done with with the uh, rock and reviews. And the whole idea was basically when I launched it, David, was to show the new equipment coming out. So the latest things that come out from the NAM show and, and new pedals and new new gadgets, new guitars, new amps. And then that sort of evolved over the last year and a half to where I've been fortunate enough to get people like John Oates to come on with me or Ricky Skaggs or Tom Kiefer. Tom Kiefer walks in with his original 59 Les Paul. 
And he's sitting next to me like you and I are. And he goes, hey, Eric, would you would you like to hold it and play it? And I'm almost <laughs> speechless because I know that this guitar is worth more than a house. Yeah. And he just sort of hands yeah. it over to me and goes, here you go. And I'm like, oh, I'm holding it really tight, you know. Only in Nashville. It's incredible. And, and that's, you know, and when I came up with the idea and I approached news about doing a rock interview thing, and just like we're doing with talking about the gear here, it's like it, it made sense to me because everybody, you know, just like Bobby and just like you and just like Gary, everybody here is touched by music in some way. Whether they are a musician, singer, songwriter, work in a studio, something, everybody is touched by music and music equipment here, and it's fun. You know, it's fun to talk about. It. It's fun to see what's new. Maybe you're not looking for a, a new guitar or something, but maybe your uncle is. And you say, hey, man, we just checked out this cool new guitar. Check this one out. It played and sounded good. Doesn't cost too much. And so to me, I, I think it works for the musicians here and, and the non-musicians that just want to, you know, see some of their cool artists like Ricky Skaggs or Phil Keggy and some of these people. Kenny Olsen came on with me from Kid Rock. It's a lot of fun. I mean, I learn all the time, and I have to learn about the products and the people that come on with me, just like you do. And I think the audience kind of gets in touch with that. You're listening to Music Business Radio. You're backstage passing the music business. We're from South Street Studios today, the heart of Music Row. Bobby Holland was gracious enough to let us in his studios. He's in the other room engineering. And is this not a great place? You know, it's great. When I when I pulled up, I'm like, I thought from the get go, you know, when I'm, I'm walking up the steps, I'm like, I'm gonna like this already. Yeah. You and know, I, when, I mean, it's like it's like a big old house with the woodwork, and we're here. We've got like a, a fireplace. It looks like it used to be somebody's living room. Probably the, back in the 1800s. Yeah, we've you know? got the hearth. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And we're surrounded by some really cool gear. That must be exciting for you. It, it was. You know, as soon as, uh, you know, I walked in, you know, Bobby and I started talking about the amplifiers and everything. And, and I've played several of the amplifiers he has here, like the Shaw and the little Walter. And uh, this definitely has a homey atmosphere. I, I think that's one of the things that we're going to show here with the segments that we're doing with you and that people maybe don't understand unless you've been to Nashville. There's that kind of homey stuff. This is just what we do as part of Nashville culture. We were probably hanging out here for 30 minutes or an hour just discussing gear before, oh, we got to tape a show today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it seemed kind of natural, right? Because yeah, everybody really in the room, myself included, like I said, the producer, the guys dropping by, everybody plays guitar, and it's something that touches all of us. So. It really is. you know. And after living here for two years now uh, in Nashville with my family, I think that's what is sort of uh, in great appreciating me to this place is that, you know, everybody's so nice. People honestly want to help you out. Some of the people I talk with on the Rock and Review, I'm like, hey, man, how did you play that lick? And I'm talking to Danny Flowers, you know, the guy that wrote Tulsa Time. And he's like, well, Eric, if you hold down your finger here and do this, and I'm like going, dude, yeah. you know, but to me, that's such so much fun yeah. to see these people, you know, sitting next to you, standing next to you. Yeah. And uh, like you said, we're all touched by it. But yeah, Bobby's got a great setup here, man. Well, if you come to Nashville and you play guitar, you're one of us. Exactly. So, that, so anybody... <laughs> Number one rule of when you visit Nashville, if you play guitar, you're in. You know, that's like the guitar builder earlier. And I'm like, hey, man, didn't we meet at the parking lot at Guitar Center? It's like, well, yes, we did. <laughs> yeah, that was you so know? weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's how it happens, though. It is. So, Eric, you work for Sinclair Broadcasting. They own a lot of television stations and other media outlets just around the country. You've traveled around because of that and just right. in your life as a musician. What do you think, as you travel across the country, the difference in music and entertainment that people are going for? Is? You know, it, it's a, it, that's a great point, David. I'm fortunate to see the other markets, and obviously I always look for the music people and, and the musicians and everything. And particularly out in, in Las Vegas, you know, it's much more the cover bands, definitely playing at the casinos and everything like that. You're trying to entertain the tourists. I think, you know, where we're very fortunate, you know, with Nashville is that the people that come here are primarily doing original music. And it's embraced. And so you have people that talk to you and they go, hey, you know, go check out, you know, this new, you know, singer songwriter at Mercy Lounge. You know, you've got the things that go on to the Bluebird. You know, everybody has a different songwriting deal one night of the week somewhere. And I, I think that that's where we're fortunate. And I think that's why it's such a uh, creative hub for music here in Nashville to where you don't have that anywhere else. I mean, you can walk into any restaurant anywhere here and go, you know, hey, you know, I, I work for, you know, Fox 17 or something. It's like, well, here's my CD. Can you help get me on the morning show? <laughs> I mean, and typically yeah, that's true. In, in Las Vegas or, you know, like any of the other markets I go to, like Minneapolis or Des Moines or whatever, you're not going to have that happen. Yeah. You know, I think that's only in Nashville, you know, to where anybody you talk to, you know, if they're not, if they don't have a CD, then they have a son, daughter, relative, and uncle that does, and they want to talk to you. I mean, we went on a horse riding thing here in Nashville. 
I'm with the family. We're out riding the horses and all this. I'm trying not to fall off. And we end up talking to the lady. She goes, oh, yeah, my daughter just performed on this show and da-da-da, and I'm trying to get her on a local TV station. And so, you know, now we're sort of saying, what TV station? And she goes, oh, on the Fox station. It's like, well, it just so happens. I'm riding your horse, and I work for that station. Yeah. And so we end up helping her daughter get on the morning show just from something like that. Well, you know, as a native Nashvilleian, one of the things I think is so great about Nashville is just that when you see that growing up, you realize that it can happen, and not not everybody has that. No, no. And I think the the stories, you know, just like even like the Jason Aldean story with that last hit that he came out with, with the Joe Diffie. And I, and I found that so amusing when I heard it on the radio to where it was like, yeah, I listened to all the songs, didn't like any of them. The guy's like, well, I got this other one. It's like, you're not really going to like it. I just threw it together. And that's the one. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. and where else can you do that going? Hey, man, you want to take a listen? You know, <laughs> I just think that's incredible. I think you hit it on the head. It's really about time in the market, not timing of the market. You just show up every day, right. do what you're supposed to do, keep writing, keep playing. It's going to happen for you. You've got some great gear with you over the next few weeks. We're going to be yes, digging into each of these things one at a time. You've got things that make your guitar sound better, make the tone sound better, make it age a little bit. You've got something for singer-songwriters Definitely. that are not playing but want to play, how they can play easier. Oh, yeah. You've got amps. You've got a great thing I love that uh, kind of brings the volume down. So if you're in an apartment, <laughs> you can have your full band in there and not annoy the name neighbors. Got some great stuff. Eric, thank you so much. And let's give everybody information thank on you. where they can find you because you know, you're easily accessible. I know you got a Facebook account. Right, right, the, the book. It's easy to find me on Facebook. Uh, obviously, Eric Dahl, uh, Nashville. Um, I've got a website, you know, and I'm definitely going to be working on that more, you know, with the book and everything like that. And the book can be found on Amazon and everywhere else. I'm going to be doing uh, book signings. I'm actually going to go down and do a book signing at B.B. King's Museum in Indianola. So I'm going to be doing a whole media thing for that. So it's a lot of fun. I really think it's great to get the book out while Mr. King uh, is still alive and with the birthday in September. Tell, so. tell the story. Eric Dahl is here. This is Music Business Radio from South Street Studios on Music Row. Lucille and the loves before her is the new book. B.B. King did the intro. Yes, he did. Eric Dahl is the author. B.B. King is the introducer, we'll say. And it's a great book. It's fantastic. Got a lot of great pictures and stories behind B.B. King, the man who's brought us so much over the years. King of the Blues. King of the Blues. Eric, thanks for being here. We'll see you in upcoming weeks. Looking forward to it. Thank you, David. This is David Groh with HowlingMusic.com. This is Holly Baranski from Four Corners Artist Management. Hey, this is Pat Higdon from Universal Music Publishing. Hi, I'm Dale Turner with Lyric Street Records, and you're listening to Music Business Radio. On the web at MusicBusinessRadio.com. I'm on the green! Lightning 100's Live on the Green is back, and Lightning 100 is excited about our newest edition. Wait for it. Here it comes. The Lightning 100 Liney Lodge. The Lightning 100 Liney Lodge is open to the public. Come hang. Sit. Chill. Lay back. Win some prizes. Charge your phone. Compliments of Griffin Technology. Yeah! Get some yummy low and slow love from Edley's Barbecue. Yeah! And wash it down with a nice cold brew from Lightning Kugels. Hashtag awesome! The Lightning 100 Liney Lodge will be located on the corner of 3rd and Union. So come visit and play some Griffin Technology Survivor Cornhole. Meet some Lightning 100 DJs. Charge your phone. Satisfy your hunger with Edley's Barbecue. And finish it off with some of Lightning Kugel's delicious beer. The Lightning 100 Liney Lodge is brought to you by Edley's Barbecue, Jacob Lightning Kugel Brewing Company, and powered by Griffin Technology. <laughs> From Nashville, Tennessee, this is Music Business Radio, your backstage pass to the music business. This is the Music Business Gear Review with me, David Hooper, your host, and Eric Dahl. Glad to be back. Thanks, David. Here at South Street Studios once again with a room full of gear, and I'm very excited about what you're going to be sharing with me right now. You know, what's fun, too, is I definitely want listeners to be able to see this actual guitar teaching tool. Today, we're checking out the Chord Buddy. And this is cool to me because a lot of people in Nashville are lyricists or what they call songwriters, but they don't actually play an instrument. It's a great opportunity. Like, hey, you can't find your guitarist. You don't have to be dependent on a guitar player. Precisely. You can... It's pretty much like Guitar Hero. It is Guitar Hero. But, but you know, with a real guitar. Well, you know, and you and I were talking about, you know, where you press down the buttons, which we put it on the studio guitar here. So we're using just a, a, a guitar we just picked up here in the studio. It's a Yamaha acoustic, and you're making chords with one finger. 
right there you have it. You know, so it's got the different chords. You know, this is another one of those things to where I was kind of skeptical. You know, when uh, looks when like I, a toy. It, it does. And when I was approached about the chord buddy, I'm like, you know, for me being a musician and just like so many people here, I didn't really want to give people another crutch. To yeah. where they didn't learn guitar. Right. But what's cool about this, David, and if uh, anybody saw this on the Shark Tank or saw anything, you know, with John Rich, you know, talking about it, is that it's designed to where, you know, when you buy the Chord Buddy, which it fits on the plastic apparatus, fits on a uh, standard six string guitar. Like I said, we just picked one here in the studio yeah. and hooked it up. Just put it right on and it fits perfectly. And so then when you press down, you do the chords. It comes with a songbook, comes with a CD and everything with it. And then as you learn the chords, you pull out the pieces. And to me, that's what's so cool because uh, I'd seen like old ones like 